Welcome to Chuck Builds. This is a series on how to host a website with some other fun stuff, but primarily for an organization. At this time, it doesn't really matter that we're in an organization because we're just doing Docker containers. But if you want more context on what that means or why I'm bringing that up, check out the other videos in this playlist. At this time, we've already got our stack deployed. Everything is running and healthy, but we can't access anything on this page yet. There's a couple of reasons for that. And the first is our ghost container, which is going to be our website is currently set to be receiving connections from a specific URL, our domain.com that we've already purchased in a previous video. And we can't access it through that domain yet. We haven't set it up. The primary way that we're gonna be doing that is through something called Caddy. That's a reverse proxy. And Caddy is a pretty popular, pretty easy thing to set up to help us get our security certificates automatically created. There's a lot that Caddy can do, and I'm not gonna get into all of it but we're gonna get it just the bare minimum to get to the website in this video. I would encourage you to try and do some research on Caddy and see what else is out there and maybe something might work well for you. But in this video, we're really just gonna get it accessible and safe. So we need to set up Caddy and a part of setting up Caddy is we need something called a Caddy file. I will have a Caddy file on my website for you to copy and paste that will get you up and running with our three services today with a very basic setup. The way that this works is we have our URL domain in these blocks. So we have one for www. which will be for our ghost website. We will have one for N8N, which will be for the interface for setting up our automation workflows. And we'll have one for Formbricks, which will be the interface for setting up the forms. Each of these are formatted the same in which it's referencing the container by name and then the port that that container is currently running on. Notice where it says your domain here, we need to replace that with our domain that we are actually using. So I'm gonna replace it with Chuck Builds a Website. And then we're gonna get this copied and pasted to our Caddy folder. But how would you do that? We don't have direct access to this server. I don't have an easy way to access this. We'll be using a container called File Browser, which will allow us to access this app from our web browser and I already have this set up to access our caddy file here. I also have it set to access our ghost content file. If you need to restore a backup for ghost, you can put a lot of your files here and have ghost access them. But for this video, we're primarily just using the caddy file here. But to access this container, we can't just go to this port 8080 with the same um, reverse DNS URL. It won't work because of our firewall. So I'm gonna come back to our firewall section of Hetzner, which is under servers, our server, and then firewalls. And we're gonna do a couple of things here. We need to create a firewall for Caddy that will be perpetual. It will stay up and it'll always be running, hopefully, so you can access your website. And then we're gonna add a firewall rule specifically for the file browser. So first I'm gonna do create a firewall. This is gonna be for Caddy HTTP and then caddy HTTPS. So the port for HTTP is 80. We can just pick it from the dropdown. And for HTTPS, we're gonna change our protocol to TCP, and then we'll type in 443. We're gonna make sure this is applied to our server, and then we're gonna call this caddy. While that's being created, we're gonna to come to our firewall SSH, and we're gonna add a rule for file browser and this is gonna be port 8080. And we'll click save on that as well. So both of our firewalls are up and running and I'm gonna go back to our server and I'm going to grab our networking reverse DNS again that we use to access Portainer. And I'm gonna put it in my browser and type 8080 after. And it's gonna pull up our file browser. The default login for this and why we don't wanna leave this port open for long is going to be admin, admin, and we can access our folder for the caddy file. Our caddy file exists already in here and we'll open it up and we get this editor. And I'm just going to copy and paste directly from the um, document I have on my website. I'm gonna paste it here and I'm gonna click save. We're gonna come back to Portainer, click on caddy and click restart. And if we go to the logs, we can see some errors that it's trying to create authorization certificates for these domains, but it's a failed error. It can't access itself. So 
Again, we have our firewalls set for Caddy already, so we'll now go to DNS on Cloudflare for our domain. We're gonna add a couple of records. The first record is gonna be an A record, which is going to specifically reach our server's IP address. When you do this yourself, you're gonna to wanna to protect this address, but again, I'm gonna be deleting this server before I ever upload this video. So I will just copy this IP address and I'm gonna put it here where it says IPv4 address. For the name, I'm going to use dynamic. So when you go to dynamic.chuckbuildsawebsite.com, it's gonna route us to our Hetzner server. Now I'm gonna turn off the proxy status for now, but we'll be turning this back on later. And for the comment, I'm going to say dynamic a record for accessing caddy on Hetzner. If you are hosting this out of your home and you're doing this yourself in the video, you would use your WAN IP address. And again, you would make sure that you've port forwarded the same rules that we did for this firewall for caddy 80 and 443 only to the host on your network. Do not DMZ where it's your whole network and only do it to the one host on your network that's hosting Caddy. If you're doing it in um, a Docker container, that might be its own IP address sometimes. So how this works is when you go to dynamic.chuckbuildsawebsite.com, it points you to this IP address. The reason we're doing it that way is so that we only have our IP address in here once and then later we will proxy it but that doesn't answer our N8N, our Formbricks, or our WW dot. So we're gonna create C names. We're gonna add a record for a C name. We'll use www, which will automatically populate www dot for the full domain right here. And the target will be dynamic dot chuck builds a website dot com. You could put your IP address here. I think it's cleaner, especially on a residential internet to have it point to a dynamic. It just makes everything easier to kind of keep up with that it all goes through one. And then this will be a reverse proxy for ghost blog on Hetzner. And again, I'm gonna turn off proxy status temporarily. We're gonna do this again for N8N. So a C name, let's we'll grab this dynamic. Reverse proxy for NN Docker on Hetzner. And then one last one for Formbricks. Two dynamic, non proxied, reverse proxy for Formbricks on Hetzner. And save. So WW dot, N8N, and Formbricks are all going to redirect to this dynamic.chuckbuildsawebsite.com or for you, dynamic.yourdomain.com. That dynamic is gonna get routed again to this A record, and that's gonna go directly to our Hetzner server. When you use a web address, there's really only two ports it's gonna use, 80 and 443. 80 is unsecure, uh, 443 is HTTPS. So if we come back to our portainer and our containers, we're gonna restart Caddy. And if we look at our logs, it's gonna say that it was served a authentic certificate for these names and that it was started up and we're gonna have a lot less errors here. We're gonna have some notices that it's working, but no errors. So at this time, if we go to www.chuckbuildsawebsite.com, it should take us to our ghost blog. And that's great. We're working, we're up and it's going well. We have an HTTPS certificate. We are secure and we can access this. We could do the same for N8N, and we get our N8N login page, and if we do the same for Formbricks, without the setup, we need to delete the setup at the end, we can get started on Formbricks as well. So if we go back to www.chuckbuildsawebsite.com, we can click around, we can see that it's working. So at this time, while we know it's working, we're gonna go back to our DNS and we're gonna enable proxy for our root address and click save. And then we're gonna do the same to our other C names. If we leave the C name without the proxy, we get an error that it's exposing the IP address used in the A record. So we need to do all of them. And the reason we turned off um, the proxy at first was to get the certificates, because sometimes it could say there's too many redirects. 
and we might still get that with this proxy. So if I refresh it now, seems like it's still working, we can access it. So it looks like everything's working for us, which is great. So if we go back to Cloudflare, something I wanna call out, if you do get the error for too many redirects is to try without proxying your domains, but to also go to your SSL and then change it from flexible to full and it'll force you to make that connection and get those certificates. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to full and I'm gonna set it to strict. And if I refresh my web page, it still works, but it, and it keeps us safe with forcing the encryption all the way through from our client to our server. So at this time, we have our blog online and working. We have our reverse proxy working, our N8N and our Formbricks is also working. There's a couple things that we're not done yet that we need to clean up. And the first is crucial. We're gonna go back to our Hetzner server and we're going to go to our firewalls and we're going to delete the firewall with the connections for our file browser, with our portainer, and with our port 22 for SSH. We're going to come in here, edit the firewall, go to resources and remove all resources. We'll click OK. Now that that is removed, it's not applied to a server. We won't need to delete the whole firewall as I just showed because it's not applied to our server and we might need to get access to this again in the future. But for now, it can't be reached over SSH. And that is very important because there's lots of bots on the internet that are just crawling every IP address they can come up with programmatically and checking for port 22. We can test this by grabbing our public IP, opening up PuTTY, and trying to open a connection to the server and it's gonna fail because that firewall has blocked that connection. Now that we've secured our firewalls and the only access to our server is through port 80 or port 443, which is going to caddy, and then caddy is getting a certificate, securing the connection, and then giving it to our um, specific container, we are gonna to go to our ghost blog, 